It's time now to talk about another impactful topic, which is responsible AI. Sana, who do you have with you? I've got someone who might know a thing or two about that. So please welcome Principal Program Manager for Responsible AI, Sarah Bird. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to Microsoft Build. Hi, Sana. Thanks for having me. So, Sarah, you lead Responsible AI within Cognitive Services. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Responsible AI means and what it looks like within Microsoft products? Absolutely. Responsible AI is really a, uh, a collection of tools and processes and practices that enable us to think about how do we make sure our technology has the most positive impact on the world. Right? As technology creators, we get to think most of the time about all the great benefits that AI is going to bring to everyone. But we also have to recognize that as with any technology, the impact does not fall evenly on all groups of people. And often the groups that are already left behind in society historically see the most negative benefit. And so mm -hmm. we have to make sure as we're developing this technology that we think about those potential consequences and we make sure that we design the technology to, to avoid them. So we can have all of that positive impact we're looking for without having uh, unintended consequences on the world. And so when we think about how we do this in Azure Cognitive Services, we're building a lot of the core models that are lower in the technology stack, which means that people can use them to build many different experiences on top of that. For example, we'll build a speech to text model, which can be used inside of Microsoft Teams to transcribe our meeting live, but it can also be used in other settings, such as in Windows, to enable you to have um, command and control of your device. And so we have to think both about how we develop the technology responsibly, like what we need to do to the core model, but also how we enable people building experiences on top of it to use it responsibly. And so in our work, a lot of what we're doing is first looking at a technology, understanding the full shape of the technology and the potential for positive benefits and those potential negative benefits. Then we look at designing the technology and figuring out what can we do to ensure that we're minimizing those negative outcomes. And so um, one of the main things we've done, for example, across all of our services is look at uh, the fairness of the technology and look at for example, that we look at that speech to text system that I was talking about. We want to look at what different factors might change the performance of the system. For example, would it vary by gender or age or people's accents? And so we define those factors and then we actually test the system to make sure that we're getting good performance across all of those dimensions for different groups of people and improve the performance if we find any disparities. We install that to make sure it's systematic testing so that every time we update the model or we change it, we're still ensuring that we're meeting our fairness goals and that the model's gonna work well for everyone. Awesome, so this kind of fairness testing, this is really a thoughtful approach that like you and your team are doing on the Microsoft end. But how does this translate to if developers want to start using these models? How, like, is there something they have to do more to you know, use these models? Yeah, absolutely. So that comes to that other uh, dimension that I was talking about, which is the responsible use of the technology. Developers, uh, right, they often are the ones that own the complete system, right? They're taking our models and the cognitive services and they're building that end-to-end -end application. And so there's a lot that we need to look at at the application level, not just the core model. And so if we go back to the example I was just talking about of the fairness testing, then We've done testing on the core model, but it may be that a developer's application has a different distribution of data or is used in a different context. And so they actually need to do their own fairness testing on top of our model, but with their data and test the end-to-end -end system and the performance of that. But there's more than just thinking about fairness. So for example, if you're using one of these models in a setting where a failure or an error that the model made could have uh, significant consequences, then you may also need to design backup systems. For example, having a human in the, loop, in the loop to look at a failure of the model and be able to adjust so that the end-to-end -end system is robust, even if the model occasionally makes mistakes. And so we've actually released uh, a lot of new documentation, which I know you were just talking about, 
that enables developers to understand how we've created our models, what are the characteristics of the performance, what are the limitations of the model, and what are different things that they actually need to consider when they're developing the system so that they can use it responsibly. Awesome. So you mentioned docs. What are other tools for developers who want to use these custom AI models um, but want to do so in a responsible way when integrating into their app? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, we have a suite of open source tools which enable you to better understand the behavior of your model. And these are the same types of tools that we use internally. Part of the way we analyze our models and make sure that we aren't having unintended consequences is really understanding their behavior, understanding the cases where it's making errors or why it's making particular decisions. So we have an open source tool called Fair Learn, which actually developers can use both on their own data to test the fairness of our models, as I was just mentioning before, but you can also use that to look at the fairness of your model on your data and understand if it's performing differently for different groups of people. We also have InterpretML, which enables you to explain why your model is making particular decisions. So you can understand if it's learned something incorrectly or it's making correlations that you don't want it to. Finally, we actually just released a brand new one um, called Error Analysis, which I love, which enables you to actually look at the largest clusters of error in your data and say, okay, I've got a lot of errors here. Let's look at what's similar across all of these examples. And you could see, for example, that all of the images involve women with short hair and understand that your model's having challenges there and go and say, okay, well, maybe I need to improve the training data, for example. And so we have all of these tools in the open source to enable anyone who's building AI systems to be able to better understand how their models are working. Okay, that's really fascinating. I think it's awesome that you guys have all these tools and thank you so much for sharing the principles of responsible AI that you and your team are building in these models, but also the entire system. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Great, thanks for having me. Awesome.